Hello everybody, I am Ace Creeper and today I'm back with a brand new video. Today, I'm playing Minecraft. Didn't think I'd ever be saying that again, but I am. And there's a reason for that. A lot of you guys, I think I put a poll out and a lot of you guys voted that you wanted to see this. So a couple of years ago, I made a TARDIS console in Minecraft and I thought that'd be quite fun. But then I kept adding to it and adding to it and adding, adding to it that I just wanted to make it a big enough map. And if you're fans of the channel for that long, you might remember last year, I did actually complete it and do a lot of things with it and make it public and stuff. This version is not up for download, but it will be when Series 11 airs, and there's a reason for that, because I have Jodie Whittaker's TARDIS in here. I'll not be showing you it, of course, um, because, you know, spoilers and stuff, but when it does get released, I will make a video specifically on this TARDIS interior in Minecraft, so be ready for that. Um, but for now, what I'm going to be showing you today is we're going to be splitting it into two halves, first of all. Today, we will be showing you everything that's inside the TARDIS. And the next episode, whatever that may be, leave a like if you want to see it, um, will hopefully be everything outside the TARDIS. So, the cityscapes of certain places that I'm not going to talk about yet because it's quite fun to leave it um, waiting. But today, we're going to be going through as fast as possible as many rooms as we possibly can. If we don't fit it all in to a good time frame, then we're just going to kick it off anyway. So, yeah, we're starting here in 60s uh, London, I suppose. I've got the sort of signage here. Yeah, it does use a custom texture pack. I do all my own things. You know, I've designed everything to how I want it to look. Um, so yeah, although it's not perfect, I like to think that I've done my best and I'm quite happy with how it's come out and I feel like Whovians could eventually download this and enjoy it. So going into the scrap merchant's yard, there isn't too much here because obviously it's modern day, it's all been cleaned up. But there is Jodie Whittaker's TARDIS here, so yeah, not the most accurate of colours, but this was made, these textures were made a while ago, so yeah, let's go into Jodie Whittaker's TARDIS. Sensors, yay, you can't see the TARDIS. Or me at this point, but it is all there. Um, moving into the corridor here, um, we yeah, there's loads of corridors. I can't work with t proper TARDIS geometry, so everything is big, so everything's spaced out, uh, meaning long spiraling corridors, which I'm going to hopefully try and cut out. Oh, we have the Series Seven B TARDIS, the um, the sort of early Capaldi stereotype thing. It hasn't got any of the bookshelves. It hasn't got any of the short boards like in Capaldi's TARDIS, um, but it does have a lovely blue light in the middle. It's very nicely lit, and kind of functions as a semi-accurate version of what we saw in the show. Um, it's quite hard to tell because some shots are different to others, but I've tried to replicate it as nice as possible, giving enough room to walk about and stuff. And there is stuff out there. And there's also stuff, places you can go, but we're going to do that next episode. Just down the corridor is the War Doctor's TARDIS. Now, this is my third version of the War Doctor's TARDIS, mainly because the first two were way too small. So when I did a lot of the redesigns for the um, like the Matt Smith console and the David Tennant console, I decided to do the War Doctor as well and sort of bump it up and beef it up and make it massive because that's the only way it can kind of feel semi-realistic. Having no space in the TARDIS felt wrong, whereas this... This works. I kind of like this, although probably not accurate. We don't really see much of this TARDIS, so we can only assume that it is a sort of circular place. Um, with the sort of pillars that are in David Tennant's TARDIS as well. It's the most accurate one that I'm going to get, and to be honest, I'm quite happy with how it came out. So the next one's a little bit weird. Uh, this has never been in the show, but when the 11th Doctor um, came out of the TARDIS in the 11th hour, and he said to Amy, he was in the library swimming pool thing, that's been done hundreds of times, but I decided because it was technically Tennant's TARDIS interior at the time, and because we'd only seen two rooms in that version of the TARDIS, the wardrobe and the main console room, both of which had the same type of walls and the same sort of corally effect, I presume that the library swimming pool thing would look quite similar. We've got a nice blue metal on the floor, etc, the grate and all that sort of thing. There's a pipe that leads into the water zone down there. It's just a unique and different type of corridor, which is all made of glass, a bit like a sort of sea life centre. Um, and a bit of the water does pour out into here, so that's quite nice, I suppose. Over here, we've got the Hellbent console. Yeah, very white, very specific. Um, I tried to make this as accurate as possible, even including the lovely little diner as well, which again, with very minimal textures, it's not really the easiest thing to do, but again, it works. Opposite the Hellbent console, there's this. What's this, you ask? It's the bottom deck of the 11th Doctor's first TARDIS. This is probably my least favourite, mainly because, not TARDIS-wise, it's my least favourite that I've made, mainly because it just doesn't really look great. It looks very clumpy, but at the same time, so does the 11th Doctor's console. It's very, there's very few pictures of it, like, all the way around, so it is quite hard to try and replicate, especially with the ceiling and such. Um, 
So realistically, I had to just make what I thought it would look like um, in Minecraft. That's the easiest way I could do. But to make up for the sort of shoddy and poor effort at actually making this TARDIS, I have actually gone to the effort of making the little swing underneath and the little under area that you can walk in. Not just that, though. You can explore these lovely corridors down here as well, like... Uh, seen in the Doctor's Wife. This does lead into the sort of aquarium zone down there, and it also shows the sort of hole that Amy and Rory could have fallen down in that very episode. Following this corridor along, though, we get into the 8th Doctor's console room. How exciting indeed. Um, yeah, again, a TARDIS that is not really shown very well in the uh, series or the or whatever, you know, the TV movie. Um, it was quite a hard one to replicate. Obviously, it's bigger than this. It's probably one that I want to try and retry. Um, but I had a little bit of a limited space to do this one, I think. So I just sort of crammed it in. But it comes out okay. You know, I'm going to try and redo it and make it look nicer. But I tried to get it as accurate as I possibly could. But it was quite hard. So, yeah. Moving out of the 11th Doctor's console, we find the first Doctor's console. Again, quite a small variant. But I feel a possibly more accurate one than what was seen in Twice Upon a Time. The walls should all be right. And that monitor and stuff up there. I've tried to take as many reference pictures as I possibly could to make it as nice as possible and as, you know, feel good as possible. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, and it never really will be um, because it's all made out of blocks. But what is nice is that you can just walk around and get the kind of feel for it. This is the tree with the orbs on that can make anything from Journey to the TARDIS. At the end of this corridor, we have the Capaldi TARDIS. It is um, pretty much block for block exactly the same as the Smith one from Series 7B, copied and pasted directly over and then replaced with bits of bookshelves, uh, doors there, blackboards and stuff, as well as the different colour light on here. There's also stuff out there, there's also places you can travel to on this, but we're not going to in this episode, we're going to save that for next time, so yeah, enjoy that. Coming out of that TARDIS, we do find the 5th Doctor's console though, which is a nice sort of closed box version of what the actual set was. You can look in a chest, there's a sonic screwdriver if you want to play with that. Um, but it's kind of semi-ish accurate to what it kind of looked like, you know, it kind of replicates it quite nicely. And I have included some classic 80s style corridors as well, which do lead to rooms seen in that exact era, such as the art gallery. And, following the art gallery around here, we come to the swimming pool from the 4th Doctor's era. I believe, anyway. Fourth, fifth Doctor? I don't really remember, but I've seen reference pictures and I've tried to co copy that as closely as possible. Hopefully I'll be putting them on the uh, screen as well, so that should be useful. The Zero Room as well. Had to include this one, obviously, from the Fifth Doctor's first story, when he had a bit of regeneration trouble. But I do, um, I do quite like this. You know, it's quite simple, quite basic, but it works. Coming up the ladder from this area, we get to the 4th Doctor's secondary console room. Yep, a very small and compact version of it, but it is the same all there. Um, other than, of course, the um, the lovely glass prints, um, it is all made of wood, it is all a dark colour. I couldn't really get it to look very accurate with this, as it was proving quite difficult to get it in such a small space, uh, and it's such an iconic design as well. But yeah, this works well enough, I like to think. We have the Rani's console here, we don't really mess about in this uh, version of the TARDIS map. We've got the Rani's TARDIS, couldn't really get the circular rings, so I just thought that was the next best thing. There's not really much I could do to be honest, but uh, yeah, it kind of works quite nicely. It's a small version of it, but it's, uh, you know, it does its job. Popping around the corner, we have the wardrobe from the Tenth Doctor era, shown in the Christmas Invasion. Of course, we haven't got an unlimited amount of clothing in this version of the TARDIS map, but we do have the Fourth Doctors, the War Doctors, the Twelfth Doctors, Tenth and Eleventh costumes. Um, I'm going to replace one of these and use it as Jodie Whittaker's because obviously we need to be up to date, but um, overall I'm quite happy with this. It just gives a bit of playability if you ever want to download this map, really. Um, so yeah. Popping down these stairs, we come to a hallway that I like to think is reminiscent of that of the underbelly of the TARDIS from the, uh, from the journey at the centre of the TARDIS. So, yeah, that's quite nice. Also in this area, we have the Eye of Harmony from journey at the centre of the TARDIS. It is just a big black room with a bridge and a floating sun. <laughs> uh, this is probably one of the first things I made, actually, which is quite interesting. I really like the idea of just having a floating sun there. Um, walking through here, we have the shards coming through the... Uh, the walls like we had in that very episode as well as this room here which is terrible but 
looks semi-accurate to the show. It's the one where they all, uh, where the Doctor and Clara kind of jumped off the edge. Right, um, over here we have the drawing room, a very scaled down version of the drawing room, albeit, but it is all the same. This is from the TARDIS episode from um, the Adventure Games, which were released a while ago. It's a drawing room, it's got a fire at one end, and it's got books and memorabilia all over the shelves along the side with a table at the front. Yeah, it is quite nice, but it's, you know, it's simple, but it works. Um, interesting thing as well, clicking a button on this side takes you through the 8th Doctor console room as well. Every place in the TARDIS is connected, I like to make it like that, because then you can get around easier if you know all the shortcuts. Around here we have the Junk TARDIS, just a room with the Junk TARDIS in it, because the Junk TARDIS wasn't a complete console, it was just a prop, so I like to think of this as a storage room and just has that in it, for old times sake. This took a while. It's one of my favourite ones, actually. I really like this. This is the um, Eye of Harmony room, the cloister room, I suppose, from the TV movie. It's got a sort of open sort of ceiling, kind of, so you can kind of see the night sky a little bit. You can kind of see the lasers in the sky as well. Those lasers are from the other TARDIS consoles, just popping up right into the sky, because if you block it off, then it doesn't work. But yeah, this is pretty much as close as I could really get to making a decent looking um, cloister room. Um, it's where the climax of the film takes place, so it was quite an important room for me to get right. And I probably put more effort into this than I did with the 8th Doctor's actual console room, which is interesting. I try to get the windows looking nice, and it does kind of look like an oldie type church. And uh, I can kind of see Eric Roberts walking down them staircase there. So. Who knows? We have the first Doctor's console right here from Twice Upon a Time. Um, I tried to make it a little bit more accurate to the one that's in there. You know, it's got the nice sort of wallpaper there that people were very up in arms against. Um, but I've tried to make it just a more accurate version of what it actually looks like in that episode because that was a full set use. So, yeah, it was interesting because obviously it wasn't accurate to the original very much. Um, but I've tried to make it as good as possible just for this. Yeah, also, this is open to pretty much everything else in the world, so, yeah, it's not connected yet, but hopefully it will be by the time the map comes out. This is a custom TARDIS that really just doesn't exist. I just fancy making it, really. Here is the swimming pool from the journey at the centre of the TARDIS. Not really seen very often. It's only kind of seen through a hallway shot, which I think is quite reminiscent of that shot there. But going out, you can actually go and swim in it and stuff. It's... It's kind of accurate, you know, it's open to the sky, so you can kind of see the other buildings about, but, you know, whatever. One of my favourite bits is the library, trying to replicate again from Journey to the Centre of the TARDIS. Um, we've got a few different areas here, there's like a fire with a desk type study area here, and there's just nothing really here, but this bookshelf opens, and you can go out into the normal corridor next to the junk TARDIS, so that's not bad. History of the Last Great Time War book, obviously that is in that episode. So, over here... Um, all of these are titles of a book that has appeared in Doctor Who, uh, classic and modern. I took this from TARDIS Wiki, so let's hope it's right. Um, that one you'll know from the Agatha Christie one, I'm trying to think. That was what the Doctor was reading in Day of the Doctor. You know, there's loads of them, there is so many, um, I'm trying to think of one here. Angel's Kiss, Manly Malone, you'll remember that one. Got a Dalek head, a Mondasian Cyberman head, The Moment, and the War Doctor Sonic Screwdriver here as well, which is also pretty cool. We also have Time Lord epilogues there as well. Remember the sort of Time Lord things in a bottle. There were people talking in bottles that Clara spilt when she was in this room, so God knows what that was about. I presume they were Time Lords and I presume it was some sort of uh, maybe like soul or something, so I just decided to call it an epilogue because I thought that was quite cute. And popping further down this corridor, we get to the 10th Doctor's TARDIS. So, um, yeah, this is pretty interesting. This is the second version of this that I built. The first one, again, was way too small, so I decided to recreate it and to be honest, I'm quite happy. I think I did a pretty good job on this one. Considering, again, half a set doesn't really exist, um, so it would have been hard to get good reference photos of, like, the whole way around. I could just presume it is um, equal on all sides, and I decided to sort of build it up to a roof, which isn't really well lit, mainly because it doesn't really exist too much. But, um, yeah, I tried to make the console big enough so it has that sort of moulded effect, like the one in the show does. It's not just flat. Um... The pillars I like to think I've done a good job with as well, and hopefully in the right positions. And I've also got a little walkway you can go and stand on here, which I've been seen in many different episodes. Got the hat stand down there, got a bit bits and bats of railing around the TARDIS as well as the chairs. And even an accurate screen, so that's not bad, is it? I just yeah, I'm quite happy with how this came out to be honest. Um so yeah, but you can you can judge me whatever in the comments, I don't care. 
So, I did come here earlier, but because I wanted to cut it after Tenant's TARDIS, uh, here is the Paradox Machine, down that old underbelly again. Um, it is exactly a copy of Tenant's TARDIS, but instead all the lights have been taken out, most of them anyway, and the TARDIS has got a cover around it being replaced uh, with a big red glow in the middle. So yeah, it is the same as Tenant's TARDIS, almost exactly, uh, but with a few little changes. It's just a nice room to have, you know, the more the merrier with this map, really, you know, the more explorability we've got. And that's it for part one. I went through every room in the TARDIS, so I hope you did enjoy that. If you have any suggestions for rooms that I should do, make sure you leave them in the comments below. And make sure you stay tuned, because next time, we're going to be doing something amazing. We're going to be looking at this and quite a few other places. So, buckle yourself in and get ready. It's going to be very, very exciting. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment below for any more suggestions in the future. And I'll see you all next time. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.